Preparing to go completely off grid. Will we survive? Hey guys, it's Jarrah with Wicked Prepared. Welcome back everyone. Today I've got another Prepper Pantry haul for you all. I've got a couple of really big things today that I am very, very excited about that are gonna be complete game changers for us. Today's haul is based largely on two things, camping and back to school. We're getting ready for our annual camping trip to Baxter State Park up in Northern Maine. And as soon as we get back, our kiddos are gonna be getting ready to go back to school. Now I always start talking about our camping trip and then I realize that I really need to clarify what kind of a camping trip this is. Because I tend to forget that a lot of people go camping where they have hookups for water and power. Sometimes they have showers available or flush toilets. Sometimes they might even have a pool or even Wi-Fi. That is not the kind of camping that we do. Where we go for this particular trip, there's nothing like that. No power, no water, except what you haul from the pond. We're an hour from the closest cell service and half an hour on rough roads from the first dinky little general store if you were to forget something. So we're really preparing for a week of living completely off grid. And we need to be very well prepared, wicked prepared even. So any gear that we get for our camping trips really doubles as emergency gear that we'll then have on hand to use in the event of a grid down emergency situation. But I feel better investing in this gear knowing that it's gonna actually get used at least once a year and not just stashed away for just in case. Check in down in the comment section and tell us what type of camping you like to do, even if that is no camping at all. Another thing that we do at this time of year is to stock up on a lot of snack foods and really build up that area of our prepper pantry. We get enough to carry us through many months. We use these snacks on our camping trip and then what's left over gets used throughout the fall for school lunches and hiking trips during foliage season. Some of these items, we get enough that we only have to purchase them once or twice a year and they really help bulk out the snack foods portion of our emergency food storage. One thing I hear over and over from people who have had to live off of their food storage for a period of time, when they talk about what they learn from the experience, they always say they would include a lot more snack foods in their emergency food supply. In an emergency situation, people tend to reach for things that are easy and comforting and don't require cooking. The power may be out and you may be stressed or you might also be bored. It's not necessarily going to be a doomsday SHGF situation where you're working all day to rebuild society or anything like that. It's more likely that you're going to be sitting out a storm, maybe being stuck without power for a few days or weeks afterwards. Snacks will be your friend, especially if you have kids. The problem that I found with snack foods in the prepper pantry is that most snack foods don't have as long of a shelf life as a lot of other items. The kinds of foods that we stock for snacking, nuts, crackers, chips, granola bars, that type of thing, they do get stale or rancid sooner than some other foods. So while we aim for a one to two year supply on a lot of other items, we try for a six to 12 month rotating supply on our snack foods. Honestly, if you have a six month supply of snacks on hand, that is going to see you through just about any situation you could face. So let's get started and I will show you the off-grid gear and prepper pantry items that we picked up this week. Today, we're gonna to be leaving the kitchen and I'm taking you outside and into the garage to show you some of this stuff. Let's go. The first thing we got is actually a pretty major purchase and it's something that I am just over the moon excited about. And this is it. This is gonna be our new bug out van and camp mobile. We got a wicked good deal on it because it doesn't run. But all it needs is a new engine and we've already got the engine. So before long, we hope to have a fully functional bug out van. For the last few years, we've been renting a high roof cargo van like this one to haul all of our camping gear. And we do not travel light. We found we can fit everything inside the van, including about seven bikes and three kayaks. With only two seats in the van though, we've had to find rides for our kids with other family members and we trade off by hauling some of their gear for them. But this baby has a row of seats that can come in and out so we'll be able to haul our own kids. So the plan is we'll get her running and all outfitted with our camping and survival gear. And then not only can we use it for camping trips and things like that, but if we ever needed to bug out or evacuate or leave home in a hurry for any reason, we'd be all ready to go. So anyways, stay tuned because we are planning on keeping you updated with the progress we make as we start working on the van and turning it into our dream bug out van. Now let's head into the garage. So here is a lot of the stuff that I just picked up for this camping trip. 
Now this obviously isn't everything we're bringing, but this is just a bunch of stuff that I just bought. I did get a bunch of these um, sodas, and honestly, we don't drink a ton of sodas. I don't buy a ton of these, especially these single serving cans because they're super expensive now. And then I have some drinks up here. These chocolate milks, these right here, I think they're new. Yeah, it says new right there. So this is something I saw on Ibotta. So this was a good deal on Ibotta, so I thought I'd check them out, and I decided to grab them. They're just a shelf-stable chocolate milk in a carton, kind of like a juice box carton. And I've never seen this brand before. This is supposed to be high protein, easier to digest um, for people who are sensitive to lactose, I guess, which our family isn't, but it was a good deal. And that reminded me of these Nesquik's. I used to buy these all the time when my kids were little. These are shelf-stable chocolate milks and I haven't bought them in quite a while, but I figured for camping they'd be a nice treat. Now these used to come in a plastic bottle with a screw off top and I didn't realize till after I bought these that this is actually a carton now. But these are shelf stable, so if you have um, little kids who need to have milk, um, it's a good thing to have on hand for emergencies. They're single serves, so you don't have to worry about the refrigerator. Now these Nesquik, the, uh, the best buy date is a lot sooner on these Nesquik than it is on these Hershey's. The Nesquik, the date is um, the end of this year. These Hershey's, the best by date, isn't till like June of next year. And of course, they're going to stay good a little bit longer than that, but they do go bad. I know from experience with these, they do go bad, you know, probably several months after that date. But so if you're going for longer term storage, I would go with something like this. And then the other drinks over here that I got, these are the instant breakfast drinks. We do like to keep these on hand. Sometimes they're kind of like a meal replacement, so they can be a really great thing. You can have them in your vehicle. You can have them um, just for any time that you can't get a meal together. Um, they're shelf stable so you don't need to worry about refrigeration but I actually saw I've never seen this before they have Girl Scout cookie flavors and they were a deal and I bought it I got um I can't remember what the deal was I'll put it on the screen but I was pretty impressed when I saw this I was like you've got to be kidding me thin mints flavored breakfast drinks um so they've got thin mints and then they had the care uh this is called coconut caramel which is like the caramel delights and then they also had these Cinnabon which I thought looked pretty good also so I grabbed all those. They each had their own deal on Ibotta, so I got a pretty good deal on those. Anything we don't drink camping, we will bring home with us and have on hand for any time we need a quick meal replacement or just in addition to a meal. Now I got these three cases of these mini bags of chips, and this is pretty much the only time of the year that I'll buy these. And so I always buy the kinds with the Fritos in them and the Doritos. So we've got these, and then we've got this one has these Fritos and these Doritos. These are the one ounce really small bags and then these are the bigger bags a little bit bigger and they also have the Fritos and the Doritos because we use the Fritos and Doritos for walking tacos while we're camping. That's one of our go-to camping meals. You don't have any dishes to wash you just have to throw away your chip bag and you're good to go. And then the rest of the chips that are left over can be for hikes while we're camping and then they can be for hikes that we take um, this fall during foliage season we do a lot of hiking. Of course, the kids are going to be going back to school in a few weeks, so they can use these for school lunches and snacks. We can use them for work lunches. And so these will pretty much carry us through because we don't eat a ton of this stuff. They'll carry us through probably. In fact, I have a few bags left over from last year that we're going to be using before we open these. But we sometimes even like to have walking tacos as a meal at home, and it can be a really good um, shelf-stable emergency meal, like a meal in a bag that you can put together. You can put together some chip bags, and you can put together some kind of shelf-stable taco meat. You used to be able to get taco meat in a can. I haven't seen that for a while. Um, let me know if you're still able to find this in your area, but I have found um, packets of taco meat. There's You can use canned chili in walking tacos. You can use that in place of the taco meat. There's several things that you can do to make this a shelf stable meal. And then I got a couple cases of the chicken ramen noodle cups. It's not the healthiest thing, but if you've got picky kids that might not want to eat something, these are great. That's also the reason why they're great for emergency preparedness. You can have these on hand. All you have to do is boil some water and you've got a nice warm um, something that's just going to nourish you and just going to fill your belly when you really need it. These are actually going to go into our food storage and we're going to be taking an older case. Now ramen isn't going to last forever forever because it does have some fats and oils in it so it will go rancid eventually but it's going to last quite a while and honestly I can tell you I have had some that went rancid and I ate it anyways. I just added a little bit of extra hot sauce to it and it was fine. And this is just another couple packs of snack things that I grabbed because they were on sale at Walmart and they had an Ibotta deal, so it was a really good deal. Same deal, we can use these for hiking, school lunches, things like that. And then these are a few more things. I had no idea. This is Walmart's version of um, Cinnamon Life. And Cinnamon Life is my kids' favorite cereal. They love it. They go through boxes of it, but I only buy it when I can get it on sale. And so we haven't had it for a while because I haven't had a good sale. 
and I was gonna buy some just for the camping trip because the last morning when we're all packed up to go home I don't want to take the time to cook we've packed our stoves we've packed everything so we usually do cereal yogurt things like that so I was gonna treat them and buy some cinnamon life full price and when I searched on Walmart I found this so this is Walmart's version of cinnamon life and I was super excited to see this so I'm hoping that this is an exact dupe and this is just like the cinnamon life I'll be buying a lot of this if it is these cookies I don't know if these are new but I've never seen them before they're Pillsbury soft bake um, lucky charms and cinnamon toast crunch and we like to put out a s'mores bar when we go camping and we put out all different sorts of cookies not just graham crackers but everything you can think of all sorts of different candies not just chocolate and you can mix and match and make all sorts of different s'mores so I think these are gonna go in our s'mores bar but they can also just be snacked on then of course we've got cases of water now just like some of this other stuff these cases of water aren't actually going to come with us these are going to go down cellar and we're going to bring older cases up because you always need to rotate that's a really hard thing to do honestly these cases are sitting right here i just brought them home it would be so easy to just go load them into the van but we're going to have some discipline we're going to bring them downstairs we're going to put them to the back of the rotation and load up older cases but for water, we also buy these. I buy these just for camping every year. These are two and a half gallon um, containers and they have the little spigot on them. And so when we're just around the campsite um, and we want something to drink or we want water for cooking or something like that, I use these. And then we just use these bottles when we're actually heading out on a hike or something like that. And we need um, some water that we can carry with us more easily. And then of course, another fire extinguisher. Um, you definitely wanna have a fire extinguisher with you when you're camping, ask me how I know. Um, and we have had some incidents lately where we've had to use a fire extinguisher for one thing or the other. Um, pyrotechnic holiday displays, um, you never know around here. So we definitely had to replace some fire extinguishers. So this is one that I grabbed that we're gonna bring camping. Just got some vegetable oil. This is another one that's gonna rotate in. We'll grab an older jug to bring with us. This is for frying up our sugar donuts that we has become a tradition for us when we're camping. Um, it's super easy and they're super delicious. The kids ask for them every year. I just take refrigerated biscuit dough, shape it into a donut and fry it over the campfire. And then we roll them in sugar and though they're so delicious they're absolutely delicious and then of course we did grab a bunch of extra small propane canisters we do try to keep quite a few of these on hand um, we take our large propane canisters like our grill tanks with us we take um, two of those I think when we go camping and we have some trees um, propane trees and things that will run multiple appliances of ours off of a big tank so we don't use a lot of these small tanks but they are handy we actually use these for our camp shower that we got because there's no shower facilities where we go and five days without a shower is it's not my favorite thing so we got a propane and battery powered camp shower which we love so this runs that because that's off in the you know a separate area so we don't have close access to our grill tank and sometimes we use these for the coffee maker um, our propane coffee maker back there sometimes and we just like to have them on hand and then of course behind all that i do have a couple more of these rugged heavy duty totes these are the ones with like this yellow lid um but yeah you can see a lot of our stuff is just kind of staged here this is not new stuff but this is our um our camp chef that we have that down there is our pro part of our propane shower and of course our coffee pot the uh charcoal starter the charcoal chimney down there because we do use charcoal when we do like um our dutch oven we do a lot of cooking in our dutch oven when we're camping and that's what we use for that but the most exciting thing that we've got for our camping trip this year, I believe this is the crowning glory. Every year lately, we've been kind of adding a new piece of gear. And the good thing about a lot of this gear is that um, it can serve as emergency gear as well. Like you could use this in a power outage, you could use this in a grid down situation, things like that. Um, a couple of years ago, our shower here was what we got. And this is something that I know that we could use here if we were without power or running water for an extended period of time. If I needed a shower, I've got my propane shower. So this year, the piece of gear that we bought, I'm gonna take you out and show you the piece of gear that we added this year. So this is it, this is our new addition this year. This is a powered cooler, I guess you would call it. Um, I'm super excited about this. Honestly, every year, like ice for our cooler has been such an issue for us. Like we're scrambling around that morning trying to find ice. Usually we can't find what we want because we like to use the blocks. We found that works better. Last year we couldn't find blocks at all. We ended up with just ice cubes and where we go we go for five days we're out in the middle of nowhere you would have to drive I think you'd have to drive an hour to be able to buy more ice one way so you definitely don't want to be leaving your vacation to go do that and then all your food in the cooler is soggy the ice is melting you're you know having to drain out liquid and your your stuff is getting wet your packages are 
falling apart. I just, I really hated it. So we decided we'd like to try to add one of these power coolers. And this is the one that we ended up choosing. This thing is huge. So, and this is gonna be great for us um, also for like power outages at home. This is, this can run off of our vehicle power, but it can also run off of our solar generators, our um, portable power stations. We could also plug it into a regular wall plug. So if we were running our gas generator, we could use it that way as well. But this has two compartments and each side, this can be a fridge or a freezer, either side. And it's super, super awesome. We turned this on when we first got it. It's got a touch screen over here and it's got um, like each side, the fridge, well, left and right, but we have one set for like refrigerator, one set for freezer, but you could have them both be freezer, you could have them both be refrigerator, you could have one be one or the other. So you open it up. We do have some food in here already. That's another thing I like about this. We can have this set up and just plugged in at home and we can put our refrigerated stuff in here instead of in our home fridge. So I don't have to worry about forgetting anything when we go to leave. But this is awesome. It does have a light and this does really light it up. Like when we opened this up in the garage and it was dark, you could really see the inside with the light. It has this basket that lifts out that can make it um, easier for us to get things out but also loading the cooler because this cooler is pretty heavy just on its own so we would not want to like load it full of food and then put it in the, the van so we lifted out the basket and then loaded the cooler but this is fantastic so this is the other side that we have set as a freezer right now and it does have of course like a little shelf because this is where the compressor is this side has a light as well so it has this basket you can lift out so you can get to stuff that you put down there we just have a couple things in here so far, but this within, um, when we set this up and tried it out, we plugged it in and within an hour, this was down to temperature, which was um, 30 something degrees. And within less than two hours, this was down to freezing and a small water bottle we had put in here was already starting to freeze. So it's definitely powerful. Um, I'm super excited about this. It does have, you know, the handle and then it has the wheels that are going to make it easier to transport. And we also noticed something down here. There is an input for solar and it looks like there's a compartment for a battery right here. And so we're going to try to find out if, um, if that's what this is for because we were not even aware this had this when we ordered this. But it also has a bottle opener right here, which is pretty cool. My only one concern I had was, you know, this touch screen. I was just thinking like this would be a place of course it also has this right here i think you can actually charge like oops whoops um mr wicked prepared will have to fix that i don't know what i hit but um it has a port here i think you can charge a phone off of it but i was concerned about this um this touch screen just worried that it could get damaged so mr wicked prepared did come up with um just he took some foam out of some of our solar panels that they came shipped with and made a little cover for this just to protect it while it's traveling that he made just to cover up that panel because I was worried about that. So this is how the packing is going so far. Now we're back inside so I can show you the rest of the haul. Okay, so starting over here, this is all my stuff from Amazon this time. These are just some Asian, the Sunbird brand seasoning packets. This is this hot and spicy Szechuan. I have a whole bunch of different flavors of these, but I didn't have the Szechuan and I wanted this one. Um, so these make a good quick and easy meal, but another thing I like to use these for is kind of like a cheater hack for my meals in a jar. If you want an Asian um, version of a meal in a jar, you can just use these seasoning packets. And then behind that, I have some other seasonings here. Now these are sausage seasonings by this brand and I've got a mild Italian sausage. This is a two pack. This is a sweet Italian sausage. And then this is a hot Italian sausage seasoning. I have high hopes for these seasonings. Um, these are basically meant for if you make your own sausage and I'm not necessarily planning to make my own sausage, although you never know, I might. But what I really wanted to get these for is basically sometimes um, I have certain recipes that I might use Italian sausage in, um, but sometimes I have like some ground beef or some ground pork or some ground chicken, ground turkey, something like that to use up. So I think if I add some of these seasonings, I'd be able to use a plain ground meat and make it taste like the sausage that I would have typically used. That's kind of one of my plans. My other plan is we use a lot of... Um, freeze-dried sausage crumbles from Thrive Life and those are a very mild sausage crumble because they're kind of designed to be able to use in any sort of recipe. 
you know, I've used them in breakfast recipes like a breakfast sausage. I've used them in dinner recipes like a dinner sausage. And so I thought with these seasonings, I would be able to add a little bit more of that specific um, sort of spicier flavor of a specific type of sausage that I was going for in my meals in a jar. And this company has an amazing assortment of different types of sausage. I have some more on the way, so you'll be seeing some more in future hauls. There's like breakfast sausage. I've seen kibasi sausage, um, jalapeno sausage, bratwurst. There's so many different varieties from this brand. And then back here, this is just a case of 12 of the SpaghettiOs with meatballs. My kids like these kind of things. It tickles me that I'm still able to get this um, brand name case and it comes out to be less per can than buying the Walmart brand of the same thing. This is an easy, ready to eat meal. You can just heat and serve, or you can even eat it cold out of the can. So these are good to have on hand for emergencies for sure. Things like this, it doesn't have to be this. If this isn't something your family would eat, you know, find something that your family eats. And then these here are more to go along with our camping trip. I know I talked about doing um, the walking tacos. Well, I have my middle daughter has decided to go full vegetarian. She's kind of been what I call an aspiring vegetarian for quite a long time and she's finally just completely stopped eating anything I cook with meat. So I'm trying to make sure she has options, especially when we're camping where she's not gonna necessarily have our whole kitchen to make herself something different. So this is a plant-based um, taco filling, this Loma Linda brand. I've used their things literally since I was a kid and I like their things. We haven't tried this taco meat filling before, but this is, I believe, supposed to be about the same as a pound of taco meat. That looks about right. And if this is good, this might be a really good option. Even if you are a meat eater, like I'm a meat eater, but I don't mind eating meatless versions sometimes. And this is a good shelf-stable, ready-to-go um, taco meat filling, which is getting harder to find with real meat versions. I have a couple other different varieties that I'm also going to have for her to try because we've never tried any of this stuff just to see how it is. And these down here, Loma Linda, this is Vegilinks. Let me get a can out. Okay, so here's a can of these Loma Linda. Now this, these I literally have been eating since I was a child. This has been around since I was a child in the can. It's a good example of shrinkflation though because these cans were a lot bigger when I was younger. They've gotten smaller and they're really pretty expensive, but I love that they're in a can. They're very shelf stable. Um, these are pretty good. These are the um, vegetarian hot dogs, but I have always liked these. And so these I got for my daughter when we have hot dogs at the campground. She can have these. I did spend some time as a vegetarian. I mean, I am a diehard meat eater. I love meat. But when you're a child, you know, you have to eat what is being eaten in the household that you live in. So I did spend quite a few years as a child um, as a vegetarian. My parents were vegetarians for a number of years. And then I spent some time living with an aunt and uncle who were vegetarians. So I'm pretty familiar with vegetarian foods and I still, like I said, I love eating meat, but I don't mind eating some of these. They may not be an exact copy of meat, but they're good in their own right. My mother used to send me away to Girl Scout camp with a can of these and a can opener. And I would open this can and just take a hot dog out and eat it. And I would just set the whole open can under my bunk. Honestly, it's a wonder I never got eaten by a bear as a child because these were just wooden, you know, platforms with a roof and just canvas walls that hung down. And I had open cans of food under my bed. So, but she's never tried these before. I haven't bought these in quite a while. They're harder to get now. Um, and they're a little bit expensive buying them through Amazon, but we are going to try this and see if she likes it. And I consider this to be a good shelf stable um, version of a hot dog. I think I always thought these were pretty good. And then here I've got just a couple random gadgety things. This just popped up. It was, um, you know, Amazon shows you things you might like. And I love little gadgets. I love carabiners. I think I've been searching for a lot of carabiners and that's probably why it showed this to me. It's got the locking carabiner, but it has a, um, like a pocket knife built into it, which I thought was pretty handy. And then besides that, it also has a couple of different screwdriver blades here that are built into it, a Phillips head, and there's a flat head one. It has um, a glass breaker here. And I was looking all over for a seatbelt cutter because usually when you see um, a glass breaker, it comes with a seatbelt cutter as well. And I finally realized, duh, you could just use the knife blade to cut your seatbelt. But it also has a bottle opener, which is always handy to have. So I thought this was a really handy little gadget. The price was right. Um, and then this is just a pack of different key rings. I needed a key ring for a key, but these are good for all sorts of different things, attaching different things. This one comes with a tool. 
These are little Splendas. I got a couple of these. This is a teeny tiny little package. So this is going to be super um, handy for me to stash in my car or stash in my purse, different places like that for any time I need a sweetener because I rarely get, you know, a coffee out or anything, but I had a free one at Dunkin the other day and I got my free coffee and drove away and they hadn't put my sweetener in it. So I was kind of disappointed. So I like to keep something. I usually have some packets in the car, but I was driving a different vehicle. So I didn't have anything. Now this is a tea. This is an Astragalus immunity tea. This is something that was recommended to me by my good friend, Kathy, who knows a lot about holistic medicine and things like that. This is um, an herb that's used in Chinese medicine a lot, and it's really good for um, your immune system. With fall coming up, back to school, all of that, I want to make sure that we've got our immune systems um, as strong as we can. So I'm going to start trying this tea. This was a good deal for a four pack of these. I'm really excited about this. I'm going to get back to my tea drinking now that fall is coming, and I have a lot of things that I put in my tea, my collagen, uh, my prebiotics, things like that. So. I'm excited to try this one. Now this is a can of Keystone beef and this is the smaller can. I love Keystone meats and I have a lot of these but I don't really have any of the small cans and I needed a can this size for a meal in a bag recipe that I was doing. I made a cowboy pasta salad, a meal in a bag and I needed just this amount of beef. This came from Amazon and actually the reason I kept this up here is because it came like this. And obviously this is not something that I wanted to use or um, open. And so, I mean, the best buy date is way out. I'm not sure what happened to this particular can, but Amazon did refund my money. So I just wanted to point out if you get damaged cans from Amazon, from Walmart, anywhere, if you're ordering through um, the mail, it can happen. And food is not refundable. Usually it's not returnable, but if the can is damaged, and compromise, they should refund it. It's a little bit more difficult. I had to do some searching and kind of go around in circles for a little bit with some chats before I finally got somebody who helped me, but she did refund my money on this. And I don't have to send it back, I can just discard it. But I think I'm gonna be doing a video on, you know, canned food safety and what to look for when a can is good and when a can is no longer good. And I'm gonna keep this to use as an example. But this is obviously not a fault of this company. I love Keystone Meats and I did have a can that was um, not compromised and I opened it up and it was amazing. I will link that um, salads meal in a bag video down below if you wanna check it out. Now these are just some more um, meatless kind of meats that I got for my daughter for the camping trip. Um, this, I think I first got one of these at Walmart and I was ordering online and I wasn't sure what I was getting. I thought I was getting a packet of frozen meat but this is dry and this um, is a multi-pack that I got from Amazon after I got the one from Walmart so this is street taco there's another street taco there's a sloppy joe one which I'm definitely excited to try because she likes sloppy joes and there's a Korean barbecue and these are dry so they're basically like TVP I believe which is something that I have been like I said familiar with since I was a kid it's a texturized vegetable protein um, they call it things different now, plant protein. Um, this is the same as one pound of meat and you just add boiling water and it's got the seasonings in it and the you know meat substitute. So we're gonna try this. This is gonna be one of her options to try for the street taco. And then I'm excited to try some of these other versions to make her some um, individual meals, maybe freezer meals or something when we get home. And then the last couple things that I have here from Amazon are a couple of Worcestershire sauce powders. Um, I needed a new Worcestershire sauce powder because the one I had had gotten um, all caked together. Honestly, if you get powdered seasonings like this, I try to put them into mason jars with the mason jar lid. If I've done that, I've never had an issue, but this particular um, seasoning that I had, I had left in the spice jar that it came in and it had gotten caked together. I needed Worcestershire sauce powder for a meal in a bag recipe. I was doing, it was actually the same one, the cowboy pasta salad, and I ended up using something besides this, but I wanted to have this as an option. I got these two different brands just to try them out and see the difference, and I honestly didn't really taste much difference in flavor. So any type of Worcestershire sauce powder would be fine, but this is another thing that I also use in my meals in a jar. And then I got a whole bunch of these Snackies packs. These are freeze-dried snacks. Now these, I've got strawberries and I've got coconut bites. If you typically see me buy freeze-dried food in the big cans from Thrive Life, but the big cans are awesome. They have a 25 year shelf life on them. These are gonna have one to two year shelf life on these packets, but I like to have these packets when the school year starts. These are great school snacks. Um, they also make really great hiking snacks because they are so light, like freeze dried food is 
ultralight. That's why it's so popular with backpackers as well. And just recently, they started offering these in a larger pack at a discount. I think it's eight or 10 bags that you can buy of the same flavor and you get a discount. So that's what I did. Because of the shape of the bag, any bag like this that's wider at the bottom, I put them in a plastic bin and I alternate them. One upside down, one right side up. Now, I didn't get any cans in this order because there is a big sale coming up these snackies pouches don't tend to go on sale, but I did just get the sale flyers. So now I know what's gonna be on sale. So I will go over that with you because this is one of the three big sales of the year. This is the best time to stock up. There's discounts all the way up to 50% and there's like three or four pages of sales to see. I'm just gonna give a really quick preview of this back to school sale flyer. The sale does start August 23rd with early access for consultants on the 22nd. So if becoming a Thrive Life consultant is something you've ever thought about, now would be a great time to do it. You can text EARN to our number down on the bottom of the screen to find out more information. There are three pages of sale items and then the page of regular August delivery specials that's been going on all month. Discounts are up to 50% off of the retail price. Some of the things I'm most excited to see on this flyer, the mushrooms for 50% off, our favorite chicken for 45% off. We're definitely going to be taking advantage of those. The chef's packs are on sale again. That's going to be a really big one. And of course, there's going to be a lot of people excited to see the shelving units and pantry organizers on sale. There is one brand new item that's going to be debuting during the sale. Hopefully that will not sell out during the consultant only preview day. And they also have one other special offer that they've brought out just for the sale and it's this back to school meal variety pack. This is their fairly new Just Add Water emergency meals and this is a pack that's going to contain four different meals, eight packs, two of each. And that leads me to my next order of business which is a new giveaway that we're doing. If you've been following us you know that we recently did a big giveaway and we gave away a chef pack to one one of our Lucky Thrive Life customers. Well, we're gonna be doing another giveaway. We're gonna be giving away one of these back to school meal variety packs and a fruit and veggie snackies variety pack. This is a giveaway for our Thrive Life customers, but there's no purchase necessary to enter. Even if you've never made a purchase, as long as you have an account with Thrive Life under us, you're eligible to enter the drawing. So go ahead and text drawing to the number down at the bottom of your screen to find out how to enter. It's super easy. And if you want to get a closer look at the sale flyer, don't feel like you have to pause the video. We're going to have a link down in the description box where you can go take a closer look. Now Thrive Life is the premium company for freeze-dried food. They are absolutely the best. And so we buy all of our freeze-dried food from them basically. But I do try to buy as much as I can when it's on sale. That's always the way to do it. We do have a text alert system for sales and coupon codes for Thrive Life. So if you'd like to be alerted by text anytime there's a big sale or a coup new coupon code, then text sale to the number down at the bottom of your screen and that'll put you into our system. The next bunch of stuff I have here is my order from Azure Standard this month. Now the first thing here is another type of astragalus tea. Um, I just wanted to try this one as well. This is astragalus turkey tail. Turkey tail astragalus toasted maple. This sounds amazing. A lot of people in the reviews said it tasted great and it kind of reminded them of coffee and I'm a big coffee drinker so I thought I would like this. So the astragalus is definitely for immunity and the turkey tail is an adaptogen which helps deal with stress and things like this. So this is going to be great with the school year starting and fall coming and all of that. And this was a six pack of these teas. So this was a really good deal. I'm excited to try these out. And then next I got this big gallon size container of coconut oil. Coconut oil is a very, very good thing to have in your prepper pantry. I have small bottles of coconut oil that I've had for years and years and years and they haven't gone bad. This is an organic one and this was an amazing price, honestly. Azure Standard has really great prices and they have um, really great quality. And you don't have to get a huge container like this. They had smaller containers as well. You can buy things in bulk and in smaller amounts as well. I usually choose to buy in bulk. And then this is just a little thing of kitchen twine that I grabbed from um, Azure Standard. I'm sure I have some kitchen twine somewhere. It's just not something that I use very often. So I couldn't find someone I needed it the other day. So I realized I needed to buy some more. I got a new air fryer and I happened to notice that it could be a rotisserie oven. And I thought I would try out the rotisserie part. And I kind of thought it was going to be a gimmick, but it did call for tying the, the chicken up with kitchen twine and I didn't have any. So I just kind of let him dangle and he just kind of flopped all over the place in there but it came out amazing. I was super impressed with the rotisserie oven, but I did order myself some kitchen twine so that I would have this on hand for the next time because I'm definitely gonna be using that, that um, rotisserie oven a lot more because the, the chicken came out amazing. And then I did get a case of these, this is six, and it's these um, McDougal's brand Pad Thai noodle cups. I'm gonna take one of these out too for you. 
So this is just a cup very similar to the instant like ramen noodle cups that I showed earlier and I got these. I do love pad thai and this was a pretty good price for these. But what I really wanted to demonstrate with this is every once in a while we get people saying, you know, well, I wouldn't eat that kind of junk and you don't have to eat the same foods or stock the same foods that we are stocking and buying. There's lots of different choices for people based on the way that they eat and their dietary preferences. These are a lot more natural and better for you than a typical ramen cup. This is, um, well, it's gluten-free, it's non-GMO. There's no genetically modified um, ingredients in this. Back here, no BPA in the container. Look at the ingredients. There's nothing really bad in here, like other some other things. So there's lots of different choices. This is a fairly shelf-stable. This is gonna be probably as shelf-stable as a ramen cup, and it's gonna be just as easy to cook and eat but it's a lot better option. I'm gonna put the link to Azure Standard down in the description like I always do because this is a great store to shop from if you know that's your preferred way of eating. They have a lot of organic things. They don't allow um, any artificial colors or anything like that in their foods. They have a really high quality standards. If you go to the website, you can go and check out um, their quality promise and they have an amazing selection and they have really great, great prices as well. So you just have to take the basic concepts of building a food storage and apply it to the way that you want your family to eat. And then the other thing that I got here from Azure Standard is just a case of tart cherry juice concentrate. So I've got one of these out as well. Tart cherry juice, now this is concentrate. So this small um, eight ounce bottle would make a quart of juice. Now tart cherry juice is not something that you would typically drink as like a tasty juice. Tart cherry juice um, is more used medicinally and it's really good for a lot of things, but one of the things that it's really good for is sleep, helping um, you know you to fall asleep and get a good restful sleep. So I thought with school coming up, this would be great. This is something you would more put a shot of in a smoothie or something like that. We do have a lot of smoothies. You could put this into tea or into a different juice or just take a shot of it. And this, you can see um, non-GMO, it's organic, just like all of the products at Azure Standard. And then lastly, this is basically all stuff that I got from Walmart. Some little things here in the uh, front. This I just picked up because it was free on Ibotta. This was an Ibotta freebie. They have freebies all the time. I'm gonna have my Ibotta link down in the description box below. If you're not an Ibotta member, you should definitely join. It's free to join. They have rebates and um, freebies all the time. I did get a couple of these Stevia drops. This is sort of along the lines of those Splenda tablets. Um, these are liquid. They're pretty small. I sometimes have these in my car as well. And they're a little bit more natural um, having stevia. I don't think they're 100%. Um, they're not as healthy as they make you think. They do have other ingredients in them. But I sometimes feel good buying these. I do use artificial sweeteners. I try to steer clear of it and not have it all the time. But sometimes I do need it. So, And then this Skippy peanut butter. This was another um, I bought a deal. And I kind of like these little squeezy containers. They're super handy to just have in you know your car or your backpack. Because you can squeeze them out onto a cracker or a piece of fruit, whatever you have. But also I always collect different size containers of things because if I ever needed this amount of peanut butter for like a meal in a bag recipe, I like to have containers that are the specific size I need so there's no waste left over. I picked up a couple carabiners. Um, this is actually an S beaner it's called. So it's kind of like a carabiner on both sides. These are really great for attaching things onto backpacks. They're great for you know, attaching things anywhere really, but I think we're gonna use these on our camping trip to attach um, water bottles onto backpacks, attach travel mugs onto backpacks, onto bikes, things like that. And this little light, I was super impressed with this. This popped up, it was on Walmart, but it was sold by um, some sort of external seller, so it had this weird sticker on it, but this popped up as a suggestion um, for me, and I grabbed it because it was pretty inexpensive and it looked pretty cool. And I'm actually replacing a lot of items. Um, my purse got stolen a few weeks ago and I'm slowly trying to replace a lot of the sort of everyday, um, sort of everyday little preparedness items that I had in or on my purse. And this is similar to something that I had, but I was super impressed with this. It's rechargeable keychain light. So it does come with a little recharging cable, but it's very small and compact and it just would clip onto whatever. But this actually does have a seatbelt cutter. You can see it built in right here and it has a glass breaker on it so that's another reason i thought this would be really handy but um it actually has look this is a magnet so you can magnet it onto something and then it has these um two screwdriver heads i'm not sure what they actually clip into if there's something on this um on this tool or if they are something that you would use on a screwdriver you already had but i thought it was kind of handy oh oh i think they might go in right up here but anyhow 
I took this out and I wasn't even sure if it would be charged up because it just arrived and I was super super impressed with it when I pushed the button so I'm going to turn out the lights it's not it's daytime so it's not going to be super dark but I'm just going to show you how bright this light was so this is just in the kitchen with the lights out it's during the daytime but it's kind of um, cloudy outside so I'm just going to turn this on and this it's hard to tell indoors but this is very very bright and it has a dimmer setting it has like a warm light setting um, I don't even know what this setting is but it has a red light and it has a red um, strobe light which would be really handy if you wanted to be rescued if you want someone to notice you you could clip this onto your backpack or your vehicle or wherever and then of course it just goes back off but I was really super impressed with this little tool um, for the fact that it probably cost maybe 10 bucks. I can't remember, but I will put a link down in the description box for this as well if you want to check it out. So next is just, these are a couple more um, plant-based meats that I got also for my daughter to try um, camping or after camping. They're dry, dry in here. This one is already taco flavored and this one is just plain hamburger flavored. So I could definitely use this in some of her favorite casseroles that she used to love that I make with ground beef, I can. I was thinking of making um, a version with this um, plant-based meat and then maybe putting it into small disposable dishes where she could bake her own little small serving of casserole if we're having that for dinner or if she just needs a dinner different than what we're having. Even if you aren't a vegetarian, don't overlook some of, some of these plant-based meats as an option for your prepper pantry to replace meats because it's really difficult sometimes to get meats in the prepper pantry. And so this can be a good way to substitute for some of that. And then a few canned items. This lemon pie filling, um, lately I've been getting really into doing, um, I love my meals in a bag where everything you need for the meal is all shelf stable and it's included in one bag. I've started doing desserts in a bag. Um, I have a few desserts that use all shelf stable ingredients and they they tend to use um, you know a can of pie filling and I just did one that used this pie filling with a box of angel food cake mix. That's also in my video where I did the main dish pasta salads because this was kind of a bonus um, dessert recipe. So if you want to check that out that will be in the description box. It came out so super yummy and it was super duper easy. So I grabbed another can of this pie filling so that I can put together some more of those bags. And then I've got a few things that are all kind of chili based because I was looking for vegetarian chili for my daughter because another thing you can do with the um, walking tacos is use a can of chili instead of taco meat in the chip bag. I've done that before. So I was looking for vegetarian chili and I found this and I got some cans of this. But I also found this one which is a white um, bean verde chili and I thought that sounded really good and this could be something that she might just heat up and eat, whether we're camping or whether it's when we're at home. And it's always good for preparedness to have these ready to go meals that can just be heated and eaten or could be eaten without heating if you needed to. But while I was searching for chili, I found a couple other things I thought were pretty cool. This is Hormel and it's chili cheese. So it's just no bean chili with American cheese. It's meant for putting on hot dogs. I thought this could be really good with hot dogs or it could be really good in some recipes and things like that. So I grabbed a can of that to try and if we do like it, we'll buy more. And I also found this great value chili dog. I've never seen this before. I don't know if this was if this is new or if it's just because I was shopping at a different store than I usually shop at. But it's just chili with um, beans and franks. So it has bits of hot dog in there. So I thought that was a neat little meal as well. And then I did get a couple more cans of media crema. I love to have this in my prepper pantry. We have a few cases and I'm always trying to add more. And then just one random box of Kraft Mac and Cheese. Ibotta always has a deal on this and they usually have a bonus going where if you buy, if you do that deal like 10 times, you get an extra bonus. So I usually pick up a box of this whenever, whenever I see it um, on Ibotta. And then the final thing that I've got here, this is from Walmart. So I've got two new Dutch ovens and this is a Dutch oven accessory here. So the Dutch ovens, we already have a couple of these, but we've been, they've had a lot of heavy use for quite a few years and they're kind of in rough shape. They really need to be kind of refinished and, and we didn't have time to do that before we went on this camping trip. So I did grab two more of these because they're still pretty inexpensive. They're a little bit more than they were when I bought the, my original two, obviously. But we do love these. They're the perfect size. Um, I cook meals in these and I cook desserts in these when we're camping. You can use charcoal briquettes. And you can see it's got the legs so you put some briquettes underneath of it right on the ground and then you put some on the lid and it really makes it into a kind of like a slow cooker um, oven type of deal. And then this right here is a new accessory for me. It's um, a four-in-one and it says it can be a lid lifter 
but I already have a lid lifter that I like, but this can also be a lid stand, and that's something that I um, kind of struggle with. I never have a place to set my lid down, so I wanted a lid stand. So now keep in mind, this obviously isn't everything that we bought for our camping trip. It's just sort of a few um, things that I just bought recently that are shelf stable, sort of prepper pantry type of items. Okay guys, that's a look at some of the off-grid gear and goodies that we're taking into the wilderness with us. Just for fun, check in down below with your favorite camping meals or recipes. We we have our favorites but we're always looking for new ideas don't forget as summer draws to a close it's important to start double checking your hurricane preps your cold weather preps and your food storage so take a look at our video library and keep an eye out for upcoming videos as well if you made it all the way to the end of the video leave me a tent emoji down in the comments and check out this video to see one of our favorite camping meals i'm jara with wicked prepared survive today thrive tomorrow we'll see you next time